everybody good morning today we will be discussing about the pulse oximeter in this lecture we are going to cover the about a general understanding of a pulse oximeter and what are the parts or the components of a pulse oximeter and what are the functions of these components of, of the pulse oximeter in addition to it, we will also be seeing about the Beats law, Lambert's law and the working principle of a pulse oximeter. To start with, we all know that the pulse oximeter is a device to measure the oxygen saturation. One thing we need to remember is that it is a device to measure the arterial oxygen saturation and it measures the percentage of hemoglobin that is saturated with oxygen. Let me explain this. This is the total hemoglobin that is present in our body. That must be 100 percentage, right? And out of the 100 percentage, 3 percentage is not saturated with oxygen. While the remaining 97 percentage is saturated with oxygen. Say for example, in that case, what does the pulse oximeter do? It measures that hemoglobin which is saturated with oxygen. In our example, it is the 97 percentage. Okay. Going on to the next. What are the parts of a pulse oximeter? If you see in the diagram, that part, the top part of the pulse oximeter probe here, as you see that, the top part of the pulse oximeter, that is this probe, which we usually apply on our nail, it consists of two high intensity light emitting diodes shortly called as LEDs and a, a picture of that is also seen in the bottom of the slide and the bottom part of the pulse oximeter which is which we usually put on the pulp of the finger that consists of a photodetector. This photodetector is then connected to an electronic processor which we cannot see normally but that which is present within the body of the pulse oximeter probe. What are the functions of these parts of the pulse oximeter? The LED which we saw, which we usually apply on the nail part of the finger, that is on the topmost part of the pulse oximeter, it emits light at two wavelengths. One is the red that is at about 660 nanometers and the another one is at the infrared wavelength. This is the LED. And the photodetector which was present at the bottom part of the pulse oximeter will detect the output and sends the data to the photoprocessor. The processor after analyzing the data produces an arterial waveform on the screen. As you see here the blue part is the arterial waveform or else if it is a handheld pulse oximeter then this is the arterial waveform. What is the Beats law? The Beats law by definition it states that the amount of light absorbed increases or the transmitted light decreases as the concentration of the substance increases. If you see here you should remember that Beats law is concerned with the concentration. How do you remember that? Very simple. The alphabet next to B is C. So C is the uh, uh, C for concentration. That's how you have to remember. Beats law it deals with concentration. In detail, if you see, if this is a container that contains less concentration of a substance, this is an analogy for a finger. And if you place the photodetector at the other end of the conduct, uh, of the cylinder, okay which is containing only minimal concentration that is very minimal substances or a less concentration and when you allow infrared rays to pass through the conductor then those substances since they are very minimal they will be absorbing only minimal amount of the infrared rays and will be transmitting more like this but on the other hand but on the other hand, if you take a cylinder with increased concentration of a substance and, and similar to the previous one, you place a photodetector on the end of the cylinder. Uh, when, now, when you pass infrared light through this, it keeps containing 
lot of substance as you see in the figure what happens more the substance more light will be absorbed and only very minimal will be transmitted as you see here okay so this is what the beer's law states to to make it easier this is what exactly happens in the fingers see where this part is the finger and this gray part is drawn to show you what happens in the pulse oximeter in the first diagram there is less concentration which is beautifully depicted with uh, the apples or a tomato kind of since there is low concentration of the substance there are not uh, much absorption doesn't take place why it's obvious because there are not much substances to absorb the infrared light but on the other hand if you take this example where the concentration is quite higher then high absorption takes place as a result consequently only the transmitted light has decreased considerably which is obvious here beer's law states that the amount of light absorbed increases or the transmitted light decreases as the concentration of the substance increases okay now coming on to the next part that is the next law what does lambert's law means lambert's law states that the intensity of the transmitted light decreases exponentially as the distance traveled through the substance increases it is very logical when the distance is less as you see in the first figure then there are chances that almost all the infrared rays will reach from one end to the other end but on the other hand if the distance is more as you see in the second picture then the chances that more light will be transmitted not everything every ray of the light will be received at the other end isn't it that's logical right more will get lost when the distance is more that's what the lambert's law states so similarly in another explanation of the lambert's law where we use the finger and the pulse oximeter to explain in detail if you see here the distance traveled through the light is much less but on the other hand here where the diameter of the arteries is quite high in such case the distance travel that must be traveled by the infrared light is also high due, due because of that what happens is that there is increased absorption and the transmitted light is decreased consequently as you see in the second picture coming on to the working principle of a pulse oximeter as we had seen already the beer and the lambert's law underlies the working of a pulse oximeter in addition to it you should also know that the different absorption spectrum of the oxy and deoxy hemoglobin also forms a beer now how does the pulse oximeter work there are two leds which we had seen and they will be emitting light at 660 and 940 nanometer that is the red and the infrared wavelength respectively the oxy hemoglobin is formed to absorb more infrared and less red wavelength while the deoxy hemoglobin absorbs more red and less infrared that is the vice versa the leds are made to emit light at these two particular wavelength because of the different absorption pattern of the oxy and the deoxy hemoglobin that thereby the photo detector can compare the absorbances and calculate the oxygen saturation so to understand that better we will be illustrating it with the pulse oximeter graph in the y axis you need to mark the absorbances and in the x axis you need to mark the wavelength in nanometers and you should mark from 500 to 1000 nanometers we all very well know that the 660 which corresponds to red region and the 940 which corresponds to the infrared region in addition to it you should know two more wavelengths too they are the isobestic points at 590 nanometers and the other one at 805 nanometers 
I will be explaining in detail to you in a short while. Till then, kindly stay with me. We know very well that the oxyhemoglobin has the low absorbance at red, right? So the oxy has the low. This is the curve of the oxyhemoglobin, where we are showing low absorbance at red and high absorbance at infrared. Similarly, the deoxyhemoglobin has high absorption at red and low absorption at infrared. This is the uh, original picture of the of a pulse oximeter graph. In case you want to refer, this will be this picture will be an ideal choice. How does the pulse oximeter work? Let's continue. There are few more points in that. The we have seen that it works with Lambert's Speer law and the different absorption spectrum. This is the calculation. Now we have another obstacle that is the ambient light. We know that usually the patients are kept in areas because they are sick patients in a well lit area where the ambient light is quite heavy. So the photo detector might get confused between the LED lights and the ambient light. To prevent this error, the LEDs are switched on and off. That is almost about 100 times per second in sequence. And at one particular point of time, both the LEDs are switched off. At this point, the room light will be present and by making appropriate changes in the computation, the arterial saturation is calculated. You understand? Good. In face with a few more obstacles, that is the absorption by the tissues as well as the venous blood. How the pulse oximeter overcomes this is that to eliminate the absorption by these, the photo detector will take into account only the pulsatile component of the blood, which is the arterial blood exposed. Now, the pulse oximeter detects the arterial pulsatile component during the on and off sequence of the LEDs. The rest, that is the non-pulsatile component, especially the venous blood and the tissues, are therefore eliminated. is an isoelastic point. From the graph we saw that there are two wavelengths that is 805 and the 590 nanometers where we found that the absorption of the oxy and the deoxy are the same. These two points are known as the isoelastic points. To help you as you see at 590 nanometers the absorbance is, is the same. Similarly at 805 nanometers here exactly the absorbance is same. Uh, from the graph, an iso we are very clear that an isoelastic point is the point at which two substances absorb a certain wavelength of light to a same extent. The isoelastic point can be used as a reference where absorption of light is independent of the degree of saturation because howsoever the hemoglobin is saturated with the oxygen, like whether it is oxy or the deoxy, the absorbances is going to be the same, right? Exactly. So this principle has been used in old pulse oximeters, not now. Uh, guys, we have come to the end of the video. Now, in the next video, we will be seeing about the advantages, limitations and a few more. If you like this video, please do like, share and also help those friends who might understand the pulse oximeter better. And I do have a good news for you. In case you want any personal training in medical subjects, preferably anesthesia or physiology, I can help you. For more details, you can contact me through my mail and my mail ID is this. Happy learning!